practice and she'll be able to play real good. I'll be back in an hour. Okay, I'll take good care of her. All right, hop to it, Mary. going to get it if you persist in frittering your life away in this town. This whistle stop. I like it here. My dad was happy here. Oh, I could never understand my brother. 
And I told him when he opened this place, he'd never make a go of it. Well, he kept it failing successfully for 25 years. That's not bad. If he'd listened to me, he'd been a rich man. But no. So what did he have when he died? The biggest funeral this town ever saw. Everybody was there. Why not? Everybody owed him money. Uh, maybe so. Dad just had a wonderful time living. He liked things. He liked to hunt and fish. He liked music. Music! Yeah, he, he talked a great deal about you. He did? Mm -hmm. Always seemed to feel so sorry for you. Sorry for me? Didn't get anything out of life, just making money. Is that so? Since when has making money been a crime? Since when? Oh, I'm not going to argue with you. And I'm not going to let myself be upset. No, sir. Jimmy! Jimmy! Uncle, I'm sorry. Don't hit him, Jimmy. He's an old man. Oh, uh, no, it's just the chair, you see. Are you hurt, Uncle Charlie? Oh, don't mind me. Oh, hello, bud. Can I talk to you for a minute? Oh, yeah, well, outside here. Will you excuse me a minute, Uncle Charlie? I'm afraid I got some bad news for you, Jimmy. Oh, what's the trouble, bud? You're supposed to tack up this attachment, unless you can dig up some money. Oh. Well, I guess you have to tack it up. Unless you think eggs are gonna go up to $500 a dozen all of a sudden. Well, see what you can do. I'll hold this off as long as I can. Okay, thanks, bud. Oh, I was, uh, uh, you are just telling me about some people that wanted some musical instruments. He's the sheriff, isn't he? How'd you know? I knew his father. He was serving a paper on your father the first time I came up here. That's right. Well, Jimmy, what's it gonna be? You can stay here chasing rainbows or you can come with me. I can show you a real pot of gold that's yours for the taking. I, I... Wait a minute. That's a good idea for my radio program tomorrow night. You've heard my happiness hour, of course. Oh, yes, everybody's heard that. Once. Listen to this. The clouds that make the days so gray must sooner or later pass away. There's always a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Good old homespun philosophy. Oh, boy. Well, I've got to be going. What are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you, Uncle Charlie. I, unless a miracle happens in the next few days, looks like I'll slide down that rainbow. Fine. Land right in the pot. Uh, what, what was I saying? And furthermore... And furthermore, I see no reason for changing... What was I saying? And furthermore... And furthermore, I see no reason for changing the air guns we are now using to puff our rice and other cereals. Our present air guns are exceptionally quiet in operation. I therefore would suggest that... There goes that band again! Oh! transact any business with that going on day after day. Tom Toms, jungle screeches. They're a menace to sanity. What did I say? Tom Toms and jungle screeches. No, no, but that's what I mean. The McCorkins took that band in their house just to annoy me. That's why they've ignored all of my protests. Well, I understand it's a new band just organized. Who wants a new band? Let them organize in a cave somewhere. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. I'll settle this once and for all.
So go ahead. Call the cops if you think you can have this van thrown out of here. You just wait. You'll find out. <laughs> once and for all. I'm coming, Molly. What does this weasel want this time? As if I didn't know. No violence now. Speak to her, officer. Hello, Mom. You've been in bad company, Mac. Well, I've been sent to deliver an ultimate. Oh, you have, have you? Yes, and that van must go. They're disturbing the peace of the entire neighborhood. Well, the entire neighborhood. Does it disturb you, Mrs. Papadopoulos? Not to me. It keeps me young. Disturbing the peace. What about you, Mrs. Sweeney? It's a big advantage to me. My old man can't fight when he hears music. <laughs> they will, will they? The Rubens, the Rubens. Help! Go back to your channel and tell old man Haskell what you've had. What? Hey, what's going on here? You've heard about the feud between the Hatfields and the McCoys, haven't you? Yeah. Well, this is the one between the McCorkles and the Haskells. What you say? Who? Come on. What are you doing? I'm looking for a nice song. Oh, quit kicking me! Look out. Now, just a minute, just a minute. You might miss him. Yeah. Oh, you hoodlum! You'll pay for this, you hoodlum! Now! Where does I get it? Gosh, you hit the wrong man. Oh, no, you didn't. You hit the right man. Run! Well, wait a Come on! <laughs> oh, got oh, it's blood! I've been shot! I've been stabbed! You're all right, CJ! Take it easy! No, I'm not all right! Call the doctor! Call an ambulance! But that is blood, CJ! <laughs> it, it isn't blood! Well, what is it? What is it? Tomato juice! Oh, oh, tomato! Oh, dear! Come on in! Oh, 
sure do know your backyards and fences. Oh, I'd have made better time yet if I hadn't had to wait for you. Well, I didn't want to ask you to carry my suitcase. Have a donut, Hero. The best I can offer. Hero, me? You certainly are. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they put up a statue of you throwing that tomato. You know, like the discus fellow. Oh, well, that was an accident, hitting my, uh, that man. Accident? That was a stroke of genius. If you only knew how everybody hates old man Haskell. I know what? Why? I could give you a reason for every dollar he's got in the bank. Do you know that he's trying to drive us out of our home because he doesn't like music? That's sort of a stinker, isn't it? And how? Believe me, the name of Haskell's pure poison around here. Yes. Guess I'd better be going. Oh, what's your hurry? Well, I have to find a place to live. I sort of expected to live with a relative of mine, but it doesn't seem like a very good idea now. Well, if you'd like a place where there's never a dull moment, what's the matter with this? Why? Well, oh, yeah, know... What's going on here? Who are you and what do you want? Mommy's looking for a place to live. Oh, are you a new member of the band, or would you be living here at a cash basis? Mom, this is the fellow that hit old man Haskell with a tomato. Oh, glory be. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? So you're the fella. <laughs> now listen, young man. You're not looking any further. You're going to live right here with us. Here, give me the bag. Well, that's very nice of you, but I... But me no buts now. Why, the best room in the house is none too good for you. Whether you can pay for it or not. Come on now, give me the well, bag. Well, you're yeah, not I'll, leaving this I'll house. I'll take the bag. Willie! Willie, where are you? Well, Molly's been looking for you. And that arrangement finished. Oh, fine, Willie, right? Now, right now. I want you to take oh. this bag up to the big room. Oh, can anybody him, besides me ever like carry anything I'm around here? Sure. Gee, these changes are swell. Slide over, Frankie. All right, boys, let's go. Say, when he starts to play, the kids begin to trail him. And they all say, hooray for Pete the Piper. When he plays a song, all the kids will never fail him. They sing a song along with Pizza Piper. People gather round when they hear the sound. The camels are coming, hooray, hooray, when their lively feet catch the piper's beat. They start to sway, and then it is long. Till all the folks are dancing, their hearts are gay. When he would play them a song. When he's done all that, they pass the hat for fascinating Pizza Piper man. Sorry, I didn't mean to butt in. Get them, boys. Say, I didn't mean to bust things out. Right, please. Can you read music? Sure. Play it like this. Me? Stand over there. Okay, Frankie, pick it up.
Grady's been pounding a beat out by the garbage dumps. A little argument with old man Haskell. Oh, Grady, you should have been here a little while ago. You'd have been even for life. Yeah, what happened? Oh, boy, plenty. <laughs> what they call poetic justice. It must have been good. Good? It was perfect. Well, come on, come on, out with it. Old man Haskell came steaming over here. Yeah? And he got hit with a tomato. Oh! <laughs> right in the kitchen. <laughs> it, it was a soft one, naturally. <laughs> a hit and run cut. Oh, boy. No, nobody knows who did it, I hope. No, nobody but me. But I'm big hearted. Boys, meet the sharpshooter. Molly McCockle, will you never learn to keep your big mouth shut? What did I say? Too much. <laughs> open up, boys. Open up. The break. Now, get it here. Open up. My boy, you should have a medal. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I can't be giving you one instead of this. Oh, thanks very much. What is it? It's a warrant for assault and battery. Old man Haskell swore it out. Uh-huh. Come on, son. Uh -huh. Wait. Hey, wait a minute. Grady. Wouldn't you like to give me a good swift kick before you go? Oh, that's all right. That's, I, this has been fun here, and I enjoyed jumping over those fences with you. If I ever get this thing straightened out, I hope you'll let me come back sometime. And, uh... Well, thanks for that donut. That was all right. Uh, well, come on, Grady. Oh, yeah. 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 And next case. Oh, that was in judgment right like there. Molly, where are you? Come on, hurry up the case and stop it. Order. Order in the courtroom. Mary McCorkle, sit down. Now, listen, Mike. Don't you be getting on your high horse with me. Sit down. Now, what's this case all about? Young man, what's your name? My name? I'd prefer your real name. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, my name is James Hamilton. James Hamilton? Now, put that down. And where do you live, James Hamilton? He lives with us at my house. 419 63rd Street. Now, tell me, James, how did you get enmeshed in the coils of the law? I threw a tomato. <laughs> He's still modest, mate. <laughs> he made a bullseye right in old man Haskell's face. <laughs> he did? <laughs> uh, where were we? I'd just thrown the tomato, Your Honor. Uh, oh, oh, yes, 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 sir. <laughs> Uh, now tell me, uh, Jimmy, my boy, did you, with premeditation and intent, deliberately aim at the poor said Haskell's face? Wow. Uh, the defendant uh, refuses to answer on the grounds that he might incriminate himself. Glory be, Mike, you certainly know the law. Uh, having weighed the evidence, the court rules that the case be postponed and the defendant uh, released uh, on bail. Provided anybody has any money. We have $200. Is that enough? Uh, that was the exact sum that the court had in mind. Who has it? I have it, Your Honor. Uh, the clerk uh, will accept it. Uh... Next case. Thank you, Mike. And aside, please. Will you move over? Oh, oh yeah, of course. I'm not pushing you. Oh, oh, take it easy. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, don't don't you push me. Here comes double pneumonia. Open the windows, boys. I smell still tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Mrs. McCorkle. Very funny. I only wish it had been you that threw that tomato. So do I. Only I'd have put a rock in it. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Proceed with the case, Judge. I'm here. Where's the man that assaulted me? If you don't mind, I'll conduct this case without any advice from you.
Move along. In you go. All right, take it away, Eddie. I bring a legitimate charge against a hoodlum. And before I can give my evidence, the thug is permitted to walk out right under your nose. In the first place, he wasn't under my nose. And in the second place, the defendant was released on bail. And in the third place, you're in contempt of court. And I sentence you to 25 days or $25. Oh, that ain't enough, Mike. Quiet, quiet. This is an outrage. It's, it's a travesty on justice. $50 or 50 days. What? Make up your mind. It's worth 50 to tell you what I think. Is it worth 100? All right. But you wait until the next election. You wait until... I'm waiting. Until the... Uh, Your Honor, it appears that I haven't any money with me. Take him away, Bailiff. You can't do this to me! Court the oh, recess, You uh, can't do on. this to me! Jail. What? Yeah. 
You're frauding the taxpayers, that's what it is. All right, gangway boys, come on, come on, line up over there, line up. You, what's your name? Haskell. Haskell. Okay, we got a Haskell. All right, stand over there. What's your name? Haskell. You... Oh, wise guy, huh? I suppose you're all named Haskell. Yeah! yeah. What's your initials? Uh, James H. I got no James H, nothing. So you're the stowaway. Come on, get out of here. You ought to be locked up for pulling a stunt like this. James, yeah, my, my wallet is on my desk in the office. Get it and pay my fine, will you? Okay, I'll so be right back. Yes. So long, fellas. So long, Jimmy. So long, Jimmy. Hey, can you sing? No, I hate music. We gotta do something about this, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Jimmy, where have you been? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, uh, me? Oh, I, I would have to, uh, what's the matter? Well, we, we've been looking all over town for you. Yeah. Yeah? What for? What for? Oh, boy. Come, Come on. on. Hey, here's Jim. Molly. Jimmy's here. What? What did I tell you? I knew he'd come back. What happened and where have you been? Oh, I got locked up again by mistake. Oh, well, you certainly had the boys worried. They've been sitting here chewing their fingernails, thinking you'd run out on them. Well, why am I so popular all of a sudden? Well, they pawned their instruments to bail you out. Molly's idea. Oh, well, thanks. Very nice to know that I'm worth $200 on the hoof. First call for dinner! Oh. Jimmy, you're back! Oh, you'll be eating at the first table. Take care of him, Molly. Don't touch a thing. Get up from the table, all of you. Why, what's the matter, Ma? We've forgotten you have a new member to initiate you to the class. Oh. Here, you sit next to her. Come on, Willie, get up. Come, Come on, up. on oh, now and stop your drumming. Elma Carkle, Elma Carkle, will proudly sing thy praise. Elma mm. Carkle, Elma Carkle, where no one ever pays. Oh. 
Would you excuse me? I don't feel very well. Oh, it's probably too much excitement. Oh, maybe you're right. The jail and everything. Well, I think I'll be all right if I can go out and get some fresh air. Well, you'd better go with him. Sure. Oh, well, you don't. Uh, well, maybe I'd be better off if I just went up to my room for a while. Willie, show him his room. Come on. Willie does everything around here except eat. If you want anything, just holler. Home sweet home. spending a nickel. The brain. <laughs> Singing? You, sir? Yes, 
Yes, I was... I think I'd better go and get my suitcase. You won't need it. We have everything here. Come on. Well, here you are, my boy. This is all yours from now on. I'm so happy to have you with me at last. Oh, thank you, sir. In case you need anything, it's right there. Oh, that's fine. We'll have breakfast at 7.30, then I'll take you over to the factory and introduce you around. Best of all, I'm going to put you on the payroll. <laughs> I don't imagine you've got much money. Well, your cashier cashed a check for me. Your personal check? How much? Oh, no, it was certified. Oh, $214. That's what was left when I closed up shop. Oh, well, that dismal episode is behind you forever, my boy. Tomorrow is another day. With more music by the McCockles, probably. Jimmy! <laughs> That old lady is deliberately trying to wreck my health. But why? Just because I want her property. Oh, that's very unreasonable. Yeah, it's getting on my nerves. I can't stand it any longer. Well, Uncle Charlie, why don't you go on a vacation? And let the McCorkles think that they're chasing me out of town. That's just what they want. Nothing is going to stand in the way of my getting the man who hit me with that tomato. This is my room, if you want me. I'm going to take a hot bath and a hot toddy and go to bed. Good night, Jim. Goodbye, Charlie. <laughs> Stop that! 
I uh, heard you on the radio. You did? Wasn't I terrible? Yeah. Molly here? No. No, she didn't. Well, that's good. Look, just what goes on between you and C.J. Haskell? Oh. Well, I might as well tell you. He's my uncle. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah well, here, I'll prove it to you. Here's a letter he sent me. The James Hamilton Haskell. That's me. Here. You want to read it? No, I read enough. Say, what is this? What are you doing here? Oh, well, I almost forgot what it came for. In the first place, there's $200. Now you can get your instruments out of Hawk. Did you get that from your uncle? You don't know my uncle. Thank you, Jim. That's all right. That's all right. I, I like the people in this house. Especially, well, I like everybody. I still like to live here all the time. But as soon as Molly finds out who I am, she'll kick me out in the alley. Well, so suppose I... she doesn't find out. Well, that'd be very nice, but... Now, look, you've been regular. You didn't have to come across with that door. I'm for you, Jimmy. How about you, Hart? Sure thing, I'm for you. Well, thanks very much. That is... No, I, I still got troubles. Don't you see, sooner or later, Molly's going to find out who I am. Just like sooner or later, old man Haskell's going to find out who threw that tomato. And then it just won't work. Either way, I'm a dead duck. But how's your uncle going to find out? Well, he'll see me at the trial, won't he? What would happen if Uncle Charlie didn't show up for the trial? They'd throw the case out of court. But there's your answer. We get rid of Uncle Charlie. Ah, uh, well, we'll let Red run over him with the ice wagon. Do it? Oh, you couldn't do that. What do you mean we couldn't do that? Red would love it. I'll go get him. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Now, hold on here. Couldn't you do something not quite so drastic? Any ideas? Yeah, I think I'd better go back to Point Jervis. Now, Uncle Charlie's a pretty tough guy to deal with. And from the way he talked tonight, you'd better find someplace else to rehearse your band. Well, so long, Horace. Well, so long, Jim. Sorry about this. Willie, thanks for everything. So long, Jimmy. Long. Jim, wait a minute. What? That's it. The band. He doesn't like it. No, he certainly does not. Come on. Jimmy! Jimmy! Here he comes. Do you think it'll work, Horace? If these whiskers don't fall off. Ah, yeah. uh, 
Uh, yeah, something, Charlie. Maybe. What are you doing down here? And who is this man? Well, I'll tell you, Uncle Charlie. I got worried about you. I couldn't sleep, so I called in a specialist. Now, this is Professor Hyde. This is my Uncle Charlie. Oh, no. Nonsense. I don't need a doctor. I eat my own health foods. It's my nerves that are cracking. That's why I'm here, Mr. Haskell, to work on your nerves. Relax, please. Relax. How can anybody relax with that music going on? Music? Music? What music? That creepy music. Don't you hear it? Let's see what I mean, Professor. I tell you, I hear music. Maybe it's the radio in the library. It's not the radio. Do you still hear it, Uncle Charlie? Yes, it's still playing. Mr. Hassel, uh, tell me, where does this music seem to be coming from? I don't know, but just a moment, I'll tell you. It's cleaner down here. Uncle Charlie, don't you think you'd better go back to bed? I tell you, Jimmy, I hear it. Here. Here. It's coming from the furnace. Music in first. Well, listen yourself. Jimmy, please tell him it. You hear it? I'll get Parks. He'll get me out of this. Parks will back me up. You see if he don't. What's the matter? Don't tell me you don't hear anything. Oh, yes. It's about time I was beginning to get nervous. Beautiful string quartet. String quartet. It's bugles. Here's Bugles on phone. I tell you, I hear Bugles. It's Bugles. Don't try to humor me. Oh, all right, now let's go and get some air. You've nothing to worry about until you start seeing things. There There's you. nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Jimmy, look, doctor, look, what do you see? What do you want us to see, Uncle? Girls dancing on the lawn. Where? There. <laughs> See paper dolls dancing on lawn. Paper dolls. You're right, Jimmy. I'm in terrible shape. My nerves are all gone. Doctor, what do you think I'd better do? Mr. Haskell, give your nerves a good long rest. Get out of town. I'll do it. I'll go up in the woods. Fine, we'll help you pack. No, not until I find the man who threw that tomato. Now, Uncle Charlie, your health is much more important than that silly tomato. Yes, Mr. Haskell, that's right. Sure, now let me handle this. I'll put the finger on that fellow. He's as good as in jail right now. Almost. Now, while you're up there resting, he'll be well taken care of. Don't worry about that. And I'm the guy that can do it. Good. I take the first train out in the morning. <laughs> What's the matter now? The music stopped. All but the bull fiddle. You see, you're improving already. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Haskell. What can I do for you? Hello, Mr. Lodderman. Well, I just dropped in to see if we couldn't make the Haskell Happiness Hour a little bit happier. Welcome, stranger. Sit right down. What do you have to drink? Well, I... Uh... Hello, Mr. Backus. What's the purpose of this meeting? Well, we were about to discuss the program. You know very well that I have charge of the happiness hour during Mr. Haskell's absence. He trusts me implicitly. Well, not 100%. I beg your pardon. Look, I have a note from my uncle giving me complete charge of the program. Hmm? Well, it didn't take you long to undermine me with your uncle, did it? Mm -mm. How do I know you didn't write that yourself? Now, listen, Mr. Latterman, there'll be no change. Would you excuse us a minute? I'd like to talk to you. Would you? Yes, we had better talk to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Be right back. Oh! I'd like to make some other improvements, too. Go right ahead. Well, I'd like to use a band. No, 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 please, no. We're overloaded with bands. No, but this is ideal, because my uncle hates it. What? Yeah, it drove him clear up to Canada. Well, then what do you want to put down his program for? Well, it's pretty hard to explain, but you see, it'll give the band a break, and then they'll have to thank my uncle for it, and that'll yeah. make him feel pretty good. Up in Canada? Up in Canada. Yeah, and yeah. there's sort of a feud going on. A feud? Uh-huh. And uh, then there's a girl. Oh, a girl. <laughs> yeah. Sounds pretty confusing, doesn't it? Well, no, it sounds pretty good. It does? 
Well, that's it. You play Thursday night over a coast-to-coast hookup at the opening of the East Chester Country Club. That's great, Jim. How did you ever do it? Well, I don't know. I just started to talk. The fellow listened. I'm just as surprised about it as you are. <laughs> How much did we get for it? Uh, nothing. Nothing? No, you don't get anything. Oh. Well, what of it? Is it any different than playing for the neighbors and old man Haskell? What do we get out of that? At least this way, there's a chance. I'm Saul. What can we lose? That's all right for me. this pack through the wood for four hours to get to a place where nobody can talk English. What kind of a guide are you, anyway? Hey, Pierre, have you uh, machine talkie-talkie? Uh, no, I don't think so. I've got a good one right there. I'm not a peddler. This one is busted. I want to hear a program in America that goes on at 8 o'clock. Well, help yourself. Here, get this avalanche off my back. Oui, monsieur. Oh. Oui, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's all right now. We're about to start our broadcast. Well, boys, here we go. Good luck. Are you scared? I'll just take a deep breath. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Haskell Happiness Hour comes to you tonight from the dining patio of the exclusive East Chester Country Club. Country Club? What the...? This marks the first appearance on the air of a new band. Horror Music! And his on my program? Life. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Horace Height, and the first number on our program is Broadway Cavaliero, featuring Miss Molly McCorkle. McCorkle! And here she is, the charming Molly. She's disarming, alarming, charming, and gay. First he steals your heart, then he throws it away. He will tell you a tropical night. Make you dream of a thousand delights. First you hold your hand, say you're simply grand. Soon you think in his way. because it catches them all. He'll sing you a serenade, tenderly played upon an old male order guitar. He'll bring up the subject of dancing, and all of his pupils will sing. He's such an awful crumb, but no one dances a rumble like the Cavaliano from Broadway. Run 
by saying you're Klaus. He's not an impetuous fellow. He's like a dog having his day. This holy non amigo really comes from us. We go for a caballero from Broadway. He does okay.
beautiful park. Thank you, sir. Why don't you answer the phone? Hello? Oh, Jiminy boy, how are you? Oh, y you want to talk to Molly? Well, I, I don't think it's a very good time to... Just a moment. You go and fight your own battles. I'm not doing it for you. Well? Look, I hate to annoy you, but this is important. Now, that $1,000 offer you made last night, it was my idea, do you understand? Now, just don't argue. If anybody asks you anything about it, just follow Grady's advice. Don't you tell me to keep my mouth shut. Why should I? Well, if you don't, they'll take your home away from you. What is this, another one of your tricks? I don't need any help from you. What? I said, don't be stupid. I'm not doing it for you. This is for Mom and the boys. Oh! Excuse me, sir. Mr. Louderman and Mr. Sampson are calling. Oh, have them come in. Yes. Come in, please. Hello. Hello, Jimmy. Congratulations. Your program was a knockout. Telegrams, phone calls from all over the country. People... Oh, I beg your pardon. This is Mr. Sampson. How do you do, Mr. Sampson? Sampson. Yes, sir. Sit down? Yes, thank you. Mr. Sampson is an investigator for the federal government. Oh, I see. The, well, what's the government got to do with it? We're only concerned with one detail, the method by which you will give away the money. Oh, I see. Well, that oughtn't to be very hard. I never heard of anybody having any trouble giving away $1,000. Well, let's see. Well, you understand that it cannot be a lottery. The government wouldn't permit raffles or drawings of any description. Oh, oh, yes, I understand that. No, that would be... Well, uh, how about a quiz contest? No, no, I'm afraid not. It was announced that the money would be given away over the air, not to a studio audience. Oh. Well, that sort of complicates it, doesn't it? Let's see, well, uh... Oh, how about taking a city directory and sticking a pin in it, and then give the $1,000 to the fellow that gets stuck? Oh, no. The city directory is local. This has become a national affair. Oh, well, let's call the whole thing off and not give away my uncle's money at all. No, no, the money was promised and must be given away. Yes, if it isn't, why, my company loses its franchise. And your uncle's business is ruined. And you will be liable to a fine and imprisonment. Well, that's great. Ah, I have quite a choice, don't I? Either I give the money away and go to jail, or I don't give the money away and go to jail. Hand me the salt. Still mooning about Jimmy, huh? Well, believe me, you've seen the last of him. And he's probably glad he found out just what kind of a girl you really are. All right, Mom, all right. But it's not all right. A fine lad like Jimmy deserves a, a girl who really loves him. Whether his name be Hamilton, Haskell, or, or Hassenfeffer. Well, I hope you're satisfied. What's the matter now? Well, nobody can figure out how to give away that thousand dollars. It looks like Jimmy's going to jail on account of it. Oh, this is awful. But Jimmy isn't responsible. He didn't make the offer. I did. Well, he says it's his program and he's going to take the rap for it. Then are you going to stand by and see that boy go to jail? But Jimmy told me... I know what he told you and why. To keep a roof over our heads. Well, I'd rather we'd lose our house than lose our pride. Oh, Mom. I've been feeling the same way all week. Yes. No, not yet. Well, gentlemen, someone's got to think of something somehow and soon. It's tonight, you know, the program goes on the air, not next month. <laughs> and we're no closer to the answer than we were a week ago. Yes. I got it. Oh, I got it this time. Boy, it came to me just like that. What is it? Now, look, we'll get that bowl. You know, that great big glass bowl they used for the draft numbers? Great, that's it. Yeah. Well, boy, I'm proud of you. That'll do it. No, no, gentlemen, no, no. What's the matter? It would be a lottery and the government forbids lotteries. No, no, oh. not yet. Okay, I'll go back and see if I can't dream up something else. You're not sleeping up there, are you? Sleeping? I haven't slept for days. I'm eating aspirin tablets like peanuts. Gentlemen, I've got it. What? 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 It's the first time I've ever been able to beat this game. Uh, yes? Look, no. why don't you all go down to the broadcasting station? Maybe if I was alone, I could think of something. Okay, Jimmy, we'll get out. Samson, come on. Yes? No, that's it. Would you put that thing off the hook and leave it off? Thank you, sir. Uh, are you all right, Jimmy? Oh, yes, yeah. I'm just beginning to get my second wind. Well, you better think of something. Uh. Everybody.
7.30. Heard from Jimmy yet? No, nobody answers the phone. How are we to go in the air? Well, then when the chimes indicate 8 o'clock, you're on the air. From coast to coast.
hillbilly program. That's all my hope. Stop this I know hillbilly. He has. When did you get in town? Louderman. I want to talk to you. All right, folks, go on. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the wheel is all ready, all ready for the first spin, the spin to determine the volume number. Larry Cotton, take it away. And there she goes, ladies and gentlemen, this time after that first big volume number. Yes, sir, and we want that volume to have your name in it, ladies and gentlemen. And furthermore, I'm not going to give away one penny. Okay. Well, I've got three men in the sponsor's room right now who are begging to buy this program. Buy it! They must be crazy. Oh, is that so? Well, they represent the biggest advertising agencies in this country. What? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! We want you to be the one that Horace is going to call a little bit later. She's going down to get this volume number. Coming back just a little bit further and on and on and on. And it's 124. 124. 124. 124. 124. 124. Here, I got it. Now we're all ready for the second spin. The spin to determine the page number. Larry, let her go. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, on that second big spin. The one to find the page in that volume we chose just a moment ago. The one page that will have that $1,000 pot of golden name on it. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Haskell. How do you do, gentlemen? The surest fire advertising stunt I've ever seen. You want to sell it? Is it good? I'll give you 20000 for it right now. Is it that good? I'd like a 30. Trying to steal it, huh? And she's slowing down already just to find this right page, and there she's stopping. And it's page 66. Page 66. the third and last spin to determine the name of the person on that page who will receive the actual golden telephone call. Larry, take it away. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. This time through all of the names on our chosen page in our chosen volume, we find just the one right name that we can send this $1,000 pot of gold to. She's down at the bottom and coming back a little bit, slowing down more and more and more and more, and there it is. Our listing is 38. Listing number 38. 10, 10 20. 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it's... Uh, uh, what? Oh, it's the, the name is Mr. Olaf Swenson, 3RJ, ring 7. Ring 7? Uh, uh... Plunkett, Plunkett, Minnesota. Plunkett, uh, Pl Plunkett, Minnesota. Operator, kindly give me Mr. Olaf Swenson, 3RJ, ring 7, Plunkett, Minnesota. That's right. Get on. Yeah, hello. Stop the clock, boy. Stop the clock. Hello. 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 Is this Mr. Olaf Swenson speaking? Yeah. Yeah, that's me, Olaf. A part of what? A how You give me. They ain't got no time for monkey business. What? Huh? You give me a thousand dollars? They're speechless. <laughs> it's a million dollar idea, and it's all mine. All oh, mine. so they brought you back alive, did they? What are you doing here? I'm enjoying our program. Your program? What are you trying to put over on me now? It belongs to me, you understand? It does, does it? Why, the whole thing was Molly's idea. And Molly's idea? Who is Molly? I want to tell you. Huh? That's all right. We got you out of the whole mess. You're not liable for anything connected with the program. We fixed it so Miss McCorkle is responsible for the whole thing. <laughs> you nitwits! You nuts! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Charlie! Charlie! Oh, and Molly is responsible for the whole thing! Yeah! Hey, where are you going? Out? Oh. Um, Horace got the call through on the telephone, so it... Guess everything's fine. Yes, everything's fine. Yeah. Well, I guess it's just one of those things. Huh? The McCorkles are allergic to the Haskell. Vice versa. Yeah, vice versa. Yeah. It's fine, Molly. Molly? Where are we, Jimmy? Uncle Charlie. Oh, well, uh, you come with me. Come on, you are in on this too. Well, um... Ladies and 
and gentlemen, I want to introduce the two young people who originated this program and which will be a permanent feature of the Haskell Happiness Hour. Miss Molly McCorkle and my nephew, Mr. James Haskell. <laughs> Say something. Tell them how happy you are. Hello, everybody. I just want to tell you how happy I am that everything turned out so well for everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the reason she's so happy is that we're going to be married any second now. <laughs> All right, Miss McCorkle, trick your way out of that one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah,